Hello there, welcome to Teacher Savvy Online. Today we are continuing with our tutorials on IFRS 16. In an earlier video, I showed you how a lessee will account for a situation where lease payments are made in arrears. That is where lease payments are made at the end of the year. In this video, I'm going to show you how the lessee will account for a situation where the lease payments are made in advance or at the beginning of the year. Please if you haven't subscribed yet, kindly subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and share the videos for the perusal of others. Thank you very much. And let's go through the question. BQ Limited prepares financial statements to 31st December each year. On 1st January 2018, BQ Limited began to lease a property on a 10-year lease. The annual lease payments were 2.5 million Ghana cities, payable in advance. The first payments being made on 1st January 2018. BQ incurred initial direct cost of 500,000 Ghana cities in arranging this lease and received lease incentive of 250,000 Ghana cities. The annual rate of interest implicit in the lease is 10%. We are required to show how the lease will be accounted for in the financial statement of BQ Limited for the years ended 31st December 2018 and 2019 under IFRS. 16 leases. So, according to IFRS, according to IFRS 16 leases, at the commencement date of the lease, the leasee has to recognize a right of use asset and a lease liability. So, initial recognition. The leasee must recognize a lease liability and a right of use asset. Let's create columns for them. So we have lease liability. Then another column for right of use assets. The standard says that the lease liability at commencement date is the present value of lease payments that have not yet been paid as at that date. Okay, I take it again. The lease liability is initially recognized at the present value of the lease payments that have not yet been made at the commencement date. So, when you go back to the question, we are told. This is a situation where the lease payments are made in advance. So the commencement date is 1st January 2018. And then the first lease payment will be made on 1st January 2018. That is the commencement date of the lease. And then we have a lease term of 10 years. Okay. We have a lease term of 10 years. So we are going to find the present value of the future lease payments. The formula for finding the initial carrying amount or the initial lease liability is the annual lease payment or the annual rental times the annuity factor. Annual lease payment times the annuity factor. We are using the annuity factor because leases employ the annuity concept. Because periodically, at the same amount of payment is paid. In this particular situation, at the beginning of each period, BQ Limited is going to make a payment of 2.5 million. Okay, so it is um, a true indication of the case of an annuity. We know the annual lease payments to be 2.5 million so 2.5 million and now we multiply it by the annuity factor in this question we are in told the annuity factor I remember in the earlier video I showed you a formula or a way to calculate the annuity factor in a situation where you are not giving so let's do that the formula for finding the annuity factor is 1 minus 1 plus R 
raised to the power negative n all over r where r is the implicit interest rate or the interest rate implicit in the lease and the n is the number of payments remaining so number of lease payments remaining So let's plug in the figures. We know the implicit rate in the lease is 10%, so 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power negative n. But because this is a situation where lease payments are made in advance, it means that at the commencement date, that is on 1st January 2018, BQ Limited would have to pay uh, 2.5 million. Okay. You would have to pay 2.5 million at the date of commencement and we have a lease term of 10 years so if you've already paid one it means it is left with how many payments nine okay so you raise it to the power negative nine mind you if payments were made in, a, uh, in arrears then you would have raised it to the power of 10 because at the commencement date the company or the leasee wouldn't have be, uh, wouldn't have made any payments by that time we divide it by R, R is 0 0.1 and we punch it into our calculator we arrive at an annuity factor of 5.759 5.759 as our annuity factor so we go back and then we plug it in 5.759 when we multiply 2.5 million by the annuity factor, we arrive at a figure of 14,397,500 This is the initial lease liability Now after calculating the initial lease liability, we now go on to calculate the initial um, carrying amount of the right of use asset so first of all, we recognize the initial lease liability that we just calculated. So lease liability. That is 14,397,500. And then we add any lease payment made at or before the commencement date. Any lease payment made at or before the commencement date is added okay in this situation because payments are made in advance and the commencement date is 1st January 2018 it means that at 1st January 2018 BQ Limited will make a payment of 2.5 million and you have to recognize it as part of the right of use assets on initial recognition so lease payment made at commencement date that is two million five hundred thousand then we add any initial direct cost in the question we are told BQ limited incurred initial direct cost of five hundred thousand so we add that then also we are told BQ Limited had lease incentive to the tune of 250,000. So we are going to less that. And that gives us a final carrying amount of 17,147,500. So this is the initial carrying amount in respect of the right of use asset. After initial recognition, we go to subsequent measurements. So IFRS 16 says, on subsequent measurements, we amortize the lease liability. So we are going to 
amortize the lease liability. Subsequent measurements. We prepare our amortization schedule for that. So we have a year ended we also have open lease liability open lease liability then we have lease payment and we have outstanding balance and finance cost Finance costs are computed using the interest rate implicit in the lease of 10%. Then finally, we have our closing lease liability. Okay, let's underline it and bring our Ghana cities sign. Ghana cities, Ghana cities, and Ghana cities. We begin from the year ended 2018 because that was when the lease commenced. And then the initial carrying amount or the initial lease liability we computed was 14,397,500. So that is what we write here 14. Three nine seven five hundred. At the end of the year 2018, we are not going to make any lease payments because we are told um, the lease payments are made in advance. So for 2018, the lease payment was begin on January 1st. It means that at the year end, we are not going to make any payments. Okay, so that is a blank. So it means that. The outstanding balance at the end of the lease uh, at the end of the year is fourteen million three nine seven five hundred. We multiply it by ten percent to calculate our finance cost, and that is one four three nine seven five zero. Then we determine our closing balance by adding the outstanding balance to the finance cost. This gives us a figure of fifteen million eight hundred and thirty seven thousand two fifty. Then our beginning balance for twenty nineteen will be the closing balance for twenty eighteen. So we have fifteen million eight three seven thousand five hundred as our beginning balance. And now we are going to make a lease payment. Okay, so the lease payment will begin from the second year, so two million five hundred thousand. When you less the lease payment from the opening lease liability, you have an outstanding balance of thirteen three three seven two fifty. Then you find ten percent of this amount. We have one three 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 seven two five. As the finance cost and then we add the finance cost to the outstanding balance to get a closing lease liability of 14 million six hundred and seventy thousand nine hundred and seventy five this will become the opening balance for 2020 we are 14 six seventy nine seven five and again we make a lease payment of two million 
500,000. The outstanding balance will be the difference between the lease payments and opening liability. So that will be 12 million 170,975. 12 million 170. Um, sorry, it's 795. So let me erase that. So we have twelve million one hundred seventy thousand um, nine seven five nine seven five. Okay, it's nine seven five. Okay. Then we multiply it by the ten percent interest um, rate implicit in the lease. So we get a figure of one million two one seven zero nine seven point five zero nine seven point five as the finance cost. And when we add the finance cost to the outstanding balance, we get a closing balance of thirteen million three hundred and eighty eight thousand and seventy two point five. 72.5 okay so because the question requires us to um, present the financial statements for 2018 and 2019 it is okay to leave it at 2020 so now we subsequently measure the right of use assets because the right of use asset is depreciable we are going to calculate the depreciation charge we are going to expense to profit or loss at the end of each year so depreciation we've earlier determined the cost the cost or the current amount at initial recognition in respect of right of use assets was 17 17,147 17, so this is the amount you are going to depreciate at the end of the year so we have 17 million 500 we don't have any residual value so we divide it by the least term of 10 years and that gives us an annual depreciation charge of 1 million seven hundred and fourteen thousand seven fifty okay so now let's show how these computations will impact our financial statements so the name of the company is bq limited we have statement of profit or loss extract And since we are presenting for both 2018 and 2019, this will be, uh, it will be better to present them in a columnar form. So we have 2018 here and 2019 there. As usual, we bring our Ghana cities signed. We have finance cost. Finance cost. It's an expense, so we show it as a debit. Then we also have depreciation. So the amount of depreciation we are going to charge annually that we calculated a while ago was 1714750. So this is the amount we are going to recognize in the financial statement. So we have 1714. 750 for 2018 and the same figure for 2019 okay then we go back to our amortization schedule and look at the finance cost we are going to charge for 2018 we have finance cost of 1439750 and for 2019 we have finance cost of 1333725 
So one four three nine seven fifty. And then for twenty nineteen we have one three 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 seven two five. So these are the amounts that will be presented in the statement of profit or loss. Now let's show extracts in the statement of financial position. So we have statement of financial position extracts. Underline it. Then again, we present it in a columnar form. We have 2018 and 2019 Ghana cities Ghana cities as part of our non-current assets we have a right of use asset so under assets we have right of use assets assets and the cost of the right of use assets as we determined earlier, was seven seventeen one four seven five hundred. The same figure here seventeen one four seven five hundred. And now we come and list the accumulated depreciation. The accumulated depreciation for the first year. It's one seven one four seven five zero, and that's for the second year. It's three four two nine five hundred. Three four two nine five hundred. So now we net off the amounts. 2018, we have a carrying amount of 15 million 432,750. And in 2019, we have a carrying amount of 13 million 718,000 as the carrying amount in respect of the right of use asset. So, carrying amount. Then also we have our liabilities. In an earlier video on leases, I showed you two ways of presenting leases in the financial statement. Either you show it as a gross amount or you split it between the component uh, parts. So I'm demonstrating how we account for it or how we present it in the financial statement again. So first of all, we are showing it as a gross amount. So under liabilities, all right, lease liabilities. Okay. Now let's go back to our amortization schedule. The lease liability at the end of 2018 is 15 million eight three seven two fifty and that's for 2019 is 14 million six hundred and seventy thousand nine hundred and seventy five so these are the gross amounts we are going to recognize these are the gross amounts we are going to recognize in the 2018 and 2019 statement of financial position so under 2018 we have 15 Eight three seven five hundred, and for twenty nineteen we have fourteen six seventy nine seven five. So this is one way of presenting the lease liabilities by presenting them in their gross amounts. Another way, which is the more prescribed way, 
is to present them by splitting them between their current components and their non-current components. So we have current lease liabilities. We also have the non-current lease liability. So we have 2018 and 2019. Ghana cities, Ghana cities. So let's go back to our amortization schedule and see how we are going to split the two. Okay. So for 2018, the current lease liability will be 2.5 million, this amount. And then the non-current portion will be 13, 337, 250. Then for 2019, the current component will be the same 2.5 million. And then the non-current component will be the outstanding balance of 12, 170, 975. So the two columns you have to take note of when you want to split between the current components and the non-current components is the lease payment and the outstanding balance. The lease payment column um, represents the current liability portion while the outstanding balance portion or the outstanding balance column represents um, the non-current portion of the lease liability. So let's go and show that. So for 2018, we have a current liability of 2,500,000. 2019, the same thing, 2,500,000. Then the non-current liability component for 2018 is 13,337, 250. Then that's for 2019 is 12 million 970,975. Let's sum up the two amounts and see. So when you sum up the current liability component and the non-current liability component for 2018, you get 15 million 850. And when you do the same for 2019, you arrive at a figure of 14 million 670,975. Okay. So you realize that for 2018, the total of 15 million 850 agrees with the total liabilities we recognize here and then for 2019 we have a gross amount of 14 670 675 let's see if it agrees with that one it also agrees with this um, balance here and so you can present it in either ways okay but um splitting them between the current components and the non-current components is the most prescribed one and i encourage you to split them okay so guys um this is the end of the tutorials on um ifrs 16 i hope to get back to you on other videos in subsequent times like i said earlier please i entreat you to subscribe to the channel like comment everything okay stay blessed bye